If you had, if you did it all over again, would you still buy the 2023 Volkswagen ID4 Pro rear wheel drive? Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today we are gonna be doing our one year ownership update of our 2023 Volkswagen ID4. Let's get into it. All right, everyone, so we have had the Volkswagen ID4 for one year, actually a little bit over one year. We just hit around 26,000 miles, so we've driven it quite a bit. Uh, we're trying to be a little bit kinder to it now, uh, but I got a bunch of tests in, and I took it out to Austin and all this driving, um, and so that's why it's such high mileage but hopefully we can take care of it until we eventually uh, trade it into upgrade for the 2024 because there's some things we're excited about for that, like the increased range, the um, increased horsepower and torque, among other things. So again, we have the 2024 Volkswagen ID4 Pro rear wheel drive. Um, so everything I say is gonna be regarding the rear wheel drive model. Um, most of it stays true with the all wheel drive, um, obviously except for the driving performance and power and stuff like that. And then of course we do not have the S trim or the S plus. Uh, so we don't have the, the nicer seats and the power lift gate and all those things that I've talked about in other videos. But today we're gonna mainly stick to our experience and what we like and don't like about the video. So basically it'll be formatted. I'm gonna give my impressions. My wife is gonna give her impressions. We're gonna kind of tackle some, um, uh, general perception about the ID4 to the public to kind of clear them up or confirm them. Uh, and then lastly, we're gonna say, would we buy this car over again or not uh, based on our experience so far? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move into uh, my portion where I give you my kind of opinions about the ID4. Okay, everyone, so I'm gonna give you my take on the ID4 and then my wife is gonna give her take on the ID4. So here's mine. Um, first off, I'm gonna go with the things that I really love about the ID4. The first thing is the ride quality. I have driven a lot of not great cars in my time and I had become accustomed to bad ride quality. It was immediately noticeable when I started driving the ID4 how much better it was. Um, the suspension is really good. It's obviously not top of the line, not the best in the world, but it's really good. Um, it's an extremely smooth ride when there is a bump or something like that. Um, you don't feel it that much. Obviously, you're going to feel it, uh, but it is really, really lessened, especially compared to like when I've ridden in a, a Model 3 or something like that, where it's an extremely harsh or my Kona is a really harsh ride. This is nice and smooth, relaxing and honestly enjoyable to drive in, especially on long drives. Next, and this is kind of silly, maybe, but I really love this about the car. It's the turning radius. It has an absolutely insane turn radius. And I want to mention, if you're watching this, that the rear wheel drive ID4 has a better turn radius than the all wheel drive ID4, but I still hear the all wheel drive is still good. But for the rear wheel drive, it's just crazy. Uh, you can basically turn on a dime if you're in a parking lot and you want to turn into a parking spot, it's super easy, no issues at all. Absolutely love the turn radius, makes driving this just so simple. Next is the look. Um, I'm going to be honest, uh, when I first saw the ID4 when it came out back in 2021, I did not love the way it looked. Um, the day we picked up my wife's ID4, the one I'm driving in right now, I was just like blown away. I just, I just thought it looked so great. And um, since then, every time I'm walking up to it at a charger or, or any time like that in a parking lot, I just get, I'm, I, I'm still impressed 
uh, just like the first day at how great it looks. Um, maybe people don't love the styling, but I think it looks really, really nice. And it, I'm secretly kind of pleased that they left the styling the same for the 2024, uh, since we'll be update upgrading to that, um, because I really wouldn't want it any other way. And lastly, as far as things I really like and enjoy about the Volkswagen ID4 is travel assist. I have never had a vehicle with such, um, you know, advanced uh, driver's assistance features. And this one has really spoiled me. Um, I have driven in Teslas that have autopilot. So first off, I have my current Tesla Model S. It's a 2015 that has autopilot one, which is really not good in my opinion. Um, it's okay. I bet for the time it was just like, earth, you know, earth shattering, but now it's just not that great. I have been in the Tesla Model 3 with hardware three, and I was pretty underwhelmed with the travel assist. I know a lot of people really love it. I'm not saying it was terrible, um, but there's a lot of phantom braking, um, a ton of random disengagements. Um, it beeps all the time. Um, when you go to change lanes, you have to re-engage it. It's just really annoying. The ID4 is incredible. Um, so I have a bunch of videos, so I'm not, not gonna get super in depth about it, but basically, you know, you set it, it will do um, uh, distance. You can set your distance. I, I can't think of the word of what that is, but you can set your distance. It'll keep the distance. Um, oh, that's, uh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, it will adjust the speed. Um, it keeps you pretty centered in the lane. You can set three different lane positions, center, left, and right, and it will hold it. Um, if you want to change lanes, it'll automatically change lanes for you, which is really nice. And additionally, if you're in travel assist and you change lanes, but you don't use the auto lane change, once you're done changing lanes, it'll bump back into travel assist. And guess what? It didn't beep. It doesn't beep once the whole time when you're doing it, um, which is which is really nice. And it doesn't disengage. It's just it's just so nice and so easy to use. And um, while I know a lot of people love uh, autopilot, I think travel assist is better. You can hate me in the comments down below, but that's my honest take. Um, I am looking to get a Model Three to do the um, the boomerang in, and maybe it'll change my mind but we shall see. All right, now things that uh, I think really need a little bit of improvement for the ID4, and some improvements are coming. So first off is the software. Now listen, I am not saying the software is unusable. Um, in fact, I think it's fine. It doesn't really bother me that much, but compared to other manufacturers, it really is not top of the line, but it gets the job done. I know a lot of people with older models have had a lot of issues, but with the 2023, we have had pretty much no issue. I do notice uh, when it's hotter outside, um, the screen is glitchier. The, the colder it is, the screen's less glitchy. So I wonder if they um, maybe could have worked on the, the thermal uh, performance uh, in hot weather, because obviously when cars have the sun hit the dashboard, it's gonna heat up a lot. Uh, maybe if they had Worked on that a little bit, it'd be better. Hopefully in the 2024 ID4, those issues will be resolved. Um, and again, too, they are pushing out updates finally. Um, so hopefully that will help reduce the issues uh, people have had with software if they have had any at all. Next, the route planning. It works. And if you uh, watch my video where I take a road trip to Chicago using only the ID4 route planning, it works. Uh, is it the best? Not really. Uh, so there's definitely some issues. Um, I kind of found how to tweak it a little bit so that it works the best. Um, you have to uh, basically, you would think you could just leave Electrify America as the only chargers you want to use and it'll take you to all Electrify America chargers. But when you do that, it actually excludes some Electrify America chargers that weren't properly put in to their navigation uh, maps or whatever they have set up there. And so it actually 
forces you to go to other chargers when you should be going to an Electrify America charger, uh, which is kind of silly. So if you turn that off, it actually takes you to more Electrify America chargers. Anyways, um, that being said, just the fact that I've had to talk about that, it's got some issues um, and needs to be improved. Is it usable? Yes. Um, could it be better? Also, yes. There it is. Um, another thing that really needs to be improved and is really, frankly, annoying is the messages. Uh, for a long time, we had a message pop up about like the, the 3G or 4G, whatever, wasn't working or something, and that would keep coming up and you have to delete it, but then it come back again. Very annoying. Um, if you don't set the, um, the battery saver mode, it basically will never stop reminding you. It's gonna, it just constantly nags you until you do it, um, which is annoying. And then uh, the message for logging in, it like pops up. I don't know the time, the time frame, but it feels like every like two weeks to a month, um, which is incredibly annoying. And then lastly, it'll say uh, new settings available and that pops up. Um, and then when you click on it, it like clears out all of your settings. The, the most annoying is your ambient lighting. So then you have to go back in and reset the ambient lighting. And I've actually had this happen as many as like, I don't know, three or four times in a day. <laughs> it's just like, what is going on? Uh, hopefully the updates are good, but like, like really like four times in a day for real. So, uh, you know, that's something that hopefully they, they uh, can improve upon. And then, um, Lastly, and I already know that this has been um, resolved with the new 2024 Volkswagen 94, but there's no preconditioning. Um, I see a lot of people um, asking me questions, posting uh, rate your charges, stuff like that, about the, the charging of the ID4, and maybe only getting like 50 kilowatts or maybe getting 70 kilowatts when they expect like, you know, 180 kilowatts. Um, and that is because the battery is just not warm enough most of the time. And uh, this could be easily resolved with battery preconditioning. And this is coming in the 2024 model, which is gonna be incredible, but it's currently not in the uh, 2023 or earlier. I hope uh, that maybe they could make this a software update. I don't see why they couldn't because they have battery, um, you know, thermal management systems in the car already. So they could just turn them on and precondition the battery. So hopefully, hopefully it will come, uh, but, we shall see. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about, this wasn't a good or a bad, but just like a general comment was the charging. I just, I think the charging is great on the car. Um, I definitely think it is the absolute, like, uh, like the minimum, the, the base. Anything that's gonna be reasonable for road tripping needs to be better than the ID4's charging performance. Um, Cause you can charge 10 to 80, consistently in about, I don't know, 28 minutes, 28 to 30 minutes, which is great. Um, most of the time on a road trip, you're not gonna charge up all the way to 80. So you can count on, I don't know, 12 to 20 minute charges, which is very reasonable. If you have a family like we do, we end up going a little bit more just because we, we don't have enough time at a charging stop. So I think the charging is absolutely great and um, totally worth getting this vehicle for in my opinion given the value and the price all right so what do you think about the id4 <laughs> um as a person who's always cold i love the climate and how fast it works and how hot it gets so that's really nice um being able to like turn it on before i get in the car stuff like that seat heating all of that fun stuff so that's definitely like my favorite thing is the convenience of that um, the easy interface of driving it, like whenever people get in the car, they're like, oh, this is so much easier than I thought it was going to be. So that's fun. Um, the CarPlay and the screen infotainment, super easy to use, super easy to see. Our child loves to watch his album art go by. It's big enough for him to see it. Um, super easy to learn. And then, um, obviously the, I mean, I, Probably the most important thing is the ride quality and the drivability. I hate driving other people's cars. Like I, I can't anymore because of how wonderful my car is. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tackle the most controversial things about the ID4 that people talk about. Some are true, some are a little overinflated, 
some are a little underinflated. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the software. So what you talked a little bit about the software, but most people say the software is terrible and unusable. What are your thoughts about that? I disagree. I don't mind using it. Um, the notifications are annoying that are still not deleted after a year. Um, <clears throat> but I think it's very user friendly. I'm a not very good at technology person. I totally agree. Um, I think it's really simple to use. I don't think it's top of the line. Um, I know a lot of 21 and 22 ID4 owners did have a lot of legitimate issues. But with the 2023, I really have had little to no issues with software 3.1. And the one thing I want to just wanted to say is like, you get into a Tesla and the infotainment is amazing. It's really incredible. But the reality is a lot of people coming over from internal combustion engine cars that have never driven a Tesla have actually had pretty minimal infotainment experiences as well. Most people just use CarPlay and you're going to get that same kind of scenario here in the ID4. It's it's good enough and then the CarPlay is what people or Android Auto is what people use. So I don't think it's as big an issue as people make it out to be, but yeah, whatever. All right, everybody. Another thing that people just hate about the ID4 um, that is actually getting fixed for the 2024, but we're still going to talk about it, is that the temperature and volume on the main infotainment is not backlit. So at nighttime, you can't see it, which is true. You can't see it at all. Um, what are your thoughts about it? I don't think it matters. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. I know where it is. Yeah, I actually was driving it the other day in the evening and you just kind of, I just, just know where you, it is. You know where it is. So I, don't understand. I think it eventually becomes a non issue um, once you live with it for a while. But if you really do struggle, I have seen a lot of people do like, um, like glow in the dark tape or something like that. But like I said, like I've almost never had an issue finding it. And honestly, most of the time, I just use the steering wheel to adjust the volume, anyways. Yeah. And you can click into the climate if it's really that big of an issue for you. That takes an extra. 12 seconds, not yeah. even two seconds. 12 is a really high number. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally agree. Um, another controversial topic are the haptic buttons on the steering wheel. What are your thoughts about the haptic buttons? Yeah, I don't know how they work, so I just don't really use them. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I have watched this video, but I can't figure out the tapping. You heard it here first <laughs> on the average EV. So, um, <laughs> I, I mean, I figured out some of them, like the volume control and things, but the whole left side of the steering wheel, I'm just like, okay, well, that's what's happening now when I accidentally click on something. Yeah. So, well, it's I, probably a me thing. I love them. I, I actually have grown to really like them. I like the, the subtle, like the bump instead of like actually clicking. Um, did they need to do that? Probably not. Are they getting rid of them from what it sounds like? Eventually. 2024 will still have the haptic buttons from what I can tell. They did redesign where they are. So the volume and uh, switching tracks actually makes a lot more sense. So I think it'll become more usable. Um, but honestly, I like it. But a lot of people don't like it. And I found myself, um, I, in the beginning, I would like actually hit them and, and whatnot. But now I don't really do that much anymore. Okay, and our last controversial ID4 topic are the window switches. That's right, the window switches. Um, and funny enough, the EX30 that I will be getting in the summertime has the exact same uh, style, where it's just two buttons and then you can switch. So um, what are your thoughts about the window switches? I don't mind the rear thing. I actually kind of like that, to be honest with you, because I don't accidentally, like elbow the rear windows open. I've never done that. Like <laughs> I did that in the Nissan all the time. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's a me problem. Uh, and, but what really bothers me is they, they are also like haptic -y where you have to like push them halfway down or if you don't pull them up in the right pressure, they go, I, I don't even know how they, I don't know. I can't. Yeah, they're, yeah. Like, I, if you bump it down, but if you bump it too hard, it goes all the way down and then back up. And if you try to go up, it goes down and then it's, 
Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you just want the window down a crack. Yeah. And uh, it can be a little challenging sometimes. Yeah, and I don't have the patience to practice haptics on a window switch. So I don't. Yeah, they're technically not haptics, but... I, that's what it feels like to yeah. me. There's, like, multiple... Yeah, that's like when you it. when you push. Okay, all right. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, my thought, my my I I don't. This never bothered me because um, I don't open the windows, so it can't really bother me if I don't ever use them. Um, the only time I do use them is when I'm like going to like somewhere where they're bringing the food to my window, or if like I'm going to the Starbucks drive-through, and then I just use the driver window um, because, you know, it's not ideal to drive an EV with the windows down because it's going to affect your efficiency. So my windows are usually up most of the time. So Sometimes I don't... Sometimes you got to look at some construction vehicles. So I see it as a non-issue. If you had, if you did it all over again, would you still buy the 2023 Volkswagen ID4 Pro rear wheel drive? I think so, yeah. I like it a lot. It's probably the best car I've ever driven. I wish I had a sunroof. That's it. Yeah, it's a great car. I mean, I I didn't know how much I would like it until we had it for a while. And now I just really like it. And I get into other cars and I'm sometimes disappointed because I'm like, oh, I wish it drove as well or I wish the cabin was quieter. And obviously there's a lot of stuff that needs to be improved. We've talked about it in the video, but like over as an overall package and for the price, I just really, I don't think anything compares. I know a lot of people like the Model Y over the ID4, but um, it's, I don't know, the Model Y is not my thing, but I know it's a lot of people's thing, so I'm not gonna talk negatively about it. But um, I just think that this car is a lot more, um, feels a lot more homey um, it just feel, I feel comfortable when I'm in it and it's just really a pleasure to drive. Yeah. We don't have any issues carrying people or driving people. Um, like if we have car seat and then two people in the back, obviously that can get a little squished. But other than that, like when people yeah. get in, they're like, this is so much bigger than I thought it was. Or, um, I turn on the car and it gets warm and people are like, wow, you don't have to wait for it to defrost. I'm like, no. Yeah. It's just automatically warm or cold. Um, yeah, there's really no, the comfortability and the the drive of how clean it is and how easy it is is my two favorite things, ultimately, the most important things. Well, you, you heard it here on the Average EV. So uh, that has been our one-year review of the Volkswagen ID4. Um, it's very likely in a couple months that we'll be moving up a year to the 2024. Um, maybe we'll get a sunroof. Maybe we'll get the S. We'll see. And the, 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 we'll see how the finances are. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> that's it. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please give a like, a subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you next time.